Okay, so this is like a bit of a long story um, that I won't bore you with. Um, clearly, you can see by the lighting, it's not Monday morning, it's night time. Um, I'm having to record this chapter in advance because um, bits of my house are out of action uh, next week, which is a bit annoying. So um, I'm going to be filming a bit of stuff at night for you. Um, so we are just going to crack on and we're going to do Skin Cambodia chapter four. Badger double-checked the pocket doors that separated the kitchen from Badger's rock room were shut. The door to the hallway was shut. Skunk was out there. He was in here. Badger closed his eyes, leaned against the hallway door and despaired. How will I ever get my important rock work done? I am finished. His breath came in gulps. His heartbeat ricocheted. Finally, he told himself, you are not finished. Open your eyes. So he did. Badger opened his eyes and saw his rock room. There were bookcases of rocks and the fireplace stacked with goodies. Artistic. There hung his safety glasses and over here, his hardness testing kit. Chisels, hammers, saws, scrapers and tweezers and nail brushes. Magnifying glasses with wooden handles worn smooth by years of important rock work. And in the centre of the room, Badger's rock table, his rock light, his rock stool. The rock room is mine. Badger's eyes widened with relief. Yes, mine. He tipped Claude over to the rock table and switched the rock light on. The light pulled on the table and illuminated an object. The object had pink and grey specks. Some of the specks sparkled. He rubbed his paws together, then gently pulled out his rock stool and sat down. He picked the object up. It felt weighty. He brought it close and whispered, rock or mineral? Rock or mineral was always the first question. Even if Badger thought he knew the answer, he began at the beginning, the very beginning. He asked the first question. There'd be time for tests and prying. Eventually, Badger would scrape and scratch. Did the object leave a streak on a white porcelain tile? A streak of what colour? Later, the name would be divulged, uncovered. Sometimes it took a drop of acid, acid fizzing a carbonate. Other times, the pass of Badger's paw over the object's surface caused a sedimentary crumbling. Tools were kept at the ready. Magnifying glasses and a microscope, a blowpipe and a Bunsen burner, gloves and safety goggles. There was a broad awl, a tiny spatula, brushes of all sizes and a fine dust blower, which Badger had nicknamed his papa. But first, before any of these things, there was the beginning. There was the asking of the first question. Badger liked the beginning. At the beginning, he cleared the clutter of assumptions and guesses from his mind. He opened himself up to any possibility and asked the question, rock or mineral, Badger said. Yes, the beginning was one of Badger's favourite moments. Mineral or rock? Rock? Mineral? Hmm. Badger turned the rock over and over under the light. Minerals were made of one basic material, one element or an elemental compound, as the rock scientist said. There tended to be a sameness about a mineral. A rock, though, was a combination, a combination of minerals or a combination of rocks and minerals. Two minerals stuck together. That would be a rock. Five minerals mixed up and a rock glommed together in a mass, also a rock. The object in front of Badger had a grey speckle. It also had a pink speckle. Additionally, there was a speckle that sparkled. Badger stood up and circled his eye on the object in the pool of light on his rock table. He stopped mid-step, then he hopped in front of the object, tapped a speckle, huh, and stared. He circled again, he scratched his head and stopped. He stuck a claw in the air, ah, he thought, and then sighed, chuckled and shook his head, no, no, no. Suddenly, Badger rushed to the table, grabbed hold of the object and tossed it in the air. The object flew up, the object flew down. Badger caught it, and with all his might, he yelled out the answer, rock! Badger always answered the first question with a yell. This was usual. What was not usual was the pit spatter of feet that followed. The door to the hallway burst open. Are you okay? You yelled rock. There stood Skunk. Badger groaned. He dropped to his rock stool. Skunk stepped into Badger's rock room. Badger set the rock on the table. It clunked. Badger, you yelled. Skunk came closer. Did I? Badger mumbled, rubbing his face with his paws. Yes, you did. You yelled rock loudly. Skunk walked up to his rock table and pointed at the pink and grey rock. Is this the rock? Yes, it probably is the rock. He was staring at that one. Rock or mineral? 
Badger mumbled. Skunk bit, blinked at him and pointed again. This is a pink and grey rock. A mineral is, Badger started. Something a breakfast cereal? Skunk interrupted. Yes, I know. There's a lot of breakfast cereal in the cupboard. I have learnt that cereal boxes like to talk about minerals. Minerals, minerals, minerals. Why do they do that? Minerals do not sound tasty to me. Listen, if that is a troublesome rock, you should get rid of it. Troublesome rocks are not worth the trouble. If you don't mind me saying so, rocks are hard. Badger closed his eyes. Badger? Badger opened his eyes, sighed and looked at Skunk. Skunk, you must let me do my important rock work. When these doors are closed, you must leave me alone. I must not see you. I must not hear you. Do you understand? Skunk's jaw dropped. But you yelled rock. If you hear me yell rock, I would appreciate it if you came quickly. If I yell rock, leave me alone. That is concerning, but okay. Skunk stood there. Instead of leaving, he leaned closer and frowned in concentration at Badger. How about some chamomile tea? Chamomile is a soothing, smoothing tea. You look prickly, Badger. Goodbye, said Badger. Skunk nodded to himself. Yes, perhaps it is too late for chamomile. He gave Badger a last look and finally said, Goodbye. The door to the hallway clicked shut. Badger sighed. He breathed in. I have made my point. He breathed out. I have said what needed to be said. He breathed in. Surely there will be no more problems. The pocket doors popped open. An eyeball appeared. Badger jumped. Skunk stuck his head through. What about lunch? No lunch! Skunk looked worried. But you will be hungry. Lunch is the second best meal of the day. I will not be hungry. Don't disturb me. Okay. Skunk pulled his head back through the opening and shoved the pocket doors closed. Badger's head fell to the rock table and thunked. Many, many minutes passed. Finally, Badger sat up, rubbed his forehead and picked up the pink and grey rock. You are the rock, he whispered to the rock. He glanced at the pocket doors separating his rock room from the kitchen. He glanced at the door to the hallway. He expected to hear footsteps coming closer and to see the slight jiggle of the door handle. Badger waited. The door handle did not jiggle. He heard no sounds. Awfully quiet out there, he thought. He stood up and went to the bookcase to retrieve his hardness testing kit and thought of Skunk, always hopping, thumping, frolicking about. Badger sat out his white porcelain tile, his penny, his chunk of glass and the talc in a row and listened closely to the sounds in the brownstone. There was not a patter or a floorboard squeak or the clatter of kitchen utensils. Where was Skunk? What was Skunk doing? Badger's heartbeat sped up. Ukulele! Badger straightened. He imagined Skunk in his room, opening his closet and finding his ukulele. Badger's eyes grew large, then darted. Stop, he told himself firmly. Maybe it's quiet because Skunk is reading a book. There was an entire bookcase of books in Skunk's room. Or perhaps Skunk is taking a nap. No, not possible. Skunk told animals to tuck napkins in here and sit there. With Skunk in the room, potatoes flew from pans and sheltered in corners. People were set on fire. On fire! These were not the habits of a napping book reader. Badger stepped towards the hallway door. He needed to check his bedroom. Sit down. Important rock work, he told himself. Badger went back to the rock table and sat down. Ukulele, Badger thought and stood up. That was when the back door slammed. This was followed by a whistled tune and the crumple of a paper sack set on the counter. Skunk had gone out and returned. Oh, thought Badger. Then, clear as a bell, Badger heard Skunk whisper. Badger is working. Must be quiet. Shh. Badger sat down with a groan. He ran a paw through his stripe and thought, this cannot continue. Enough is enough. Then he sharpened his favourite pencil and opened his field notebook to a fresh page. He wrote, Dear Aunt Lulu, Skunk has arrived. He is lively. He bounces. He skips. He whistles tunes and clangs pants. Unfortunately, concentration shatters when doors are knocked open and proclamations are loudly delivered. When eyeballs appear unexpectedly between pocket doors, one jumps out of one's seat. Therefore, after a short visit, Skunk will have to make his home elsewhere. I hope you will understand as you often speak glowingly of my important rock work. On the precipice of an important rock discovery, Badger. Badger ripped the page from the notebook and folded it into an envelope. He addressed the envelope, stuck on the United Pelican stamp and set the letter on the corner of his rock table. Then he went back to work. With the letter on his table, Badger did not mind the noises coming from the kitchen when Skunk made his lunch and then later his dinner. 
Badger's stomach rumbled when something sizzled in a fry pan and a pleasing smell drifted through the pocket doors. But he patted the envelope and worked on. When he had solved his rock, Badger left the brownstone with the letter. He shut, he shut the front door noiselessly and then trotted down the front steps and along the sidewalk to the United Pelican mailbox. He opened the mailbox lid and dropped his letter inside. That takes care of that, Badger thought as the mailbox clanged shut. With a spring in his step, Badger turned and headed back to the brownstone. So I think we can all relate to that chapter. It's hard, isn't it, kind of being at home um, and all working together. I hope you enjoyed chapter four and we'll do some work on it later in the week.